Okay, good morning guys. Once again, welcome and thank you for this opportunity I have to log in. I hope you guys are fine. I hope you guys are wearing your mask. Um, once again, we'll start off today with our theme. Um, if you can open your books at home, we'll start with, if you can look on the screen, our theme for today is profiles. So we'll look at some profiles and if we just go into profiles, We'll start off with Lesson 7D. If everyone has their books open on Lesson 7D, this is what you should be able to see. So let's have fun with the lesson. Alright, today's topic will be traditions. And when we talk about traditions, we usually talk about the way people do certain things in different countries. Um, on the picture you can see on this slide you can see two pictures one of a guy with a painted face and some other guys that are dancing and it seems as if they are doing some sort of a dance traditional dance um, if anyone can guess what country this is i know some of you may know and some of you may not know but for those that do not know this is new zealand and as you can see the guy has a painted face and as you can see here as well they are doing their traditional dance now most countries has their own um, have their own traditional dances so if we can look at the first one we see the new zealand have the haka dance of which we will learn later on when we go further um, talking about traditions in vietnam um, you have your traditional clothes, which is the audio, and your traditional dance, which teacher is not very familiar with, although I do know that you guys do the um, Vina House. That's quite popular amongst young people. So most of you would know the whole Vina House thing, and right you're quite familiar with that so i know that you guys know what i'm talking about so let's talk a little bit about traditions so what is a tradition well it's the way a, a country do certain things for example the customs we will learn about customs later on but customs and traditions they are basically the same thing um, traditions is what you believe in what you follow what you guys do as a as a whole group or as a nation the things that you do each and every day all right um, teacher does not know the tradition of Vietnam in detail but if we go on um, it says look and listen to the extract and look at the pictures who are these people why are they dancing right so the people are from Maori uh, the Maori from New Zealand they are dancing because it is a special occasion now you guys usually do your traditional dances on special occasions as well which is quite popular um, amongst the different cultures I know in South Africa as well they do a certain type of dance and they have certain meals that they eat which are quite familiar with the different cultures so I'll just play a little bit of an extract and you guys can just have a listen to it as we go on. The Haka Dance. just played you a little clip and you could hear in the background the traditional type of music and the way that they were dancing and stuff it is quite interesting but let's go on and learn more about the culture of the Maoris all right so today we're going to talk a little bit about the hack Haka dance and that's the famous dance of New Zealand but without further ado, I will play the clip and let's read the slide together and then we can have a little chat later on um, as soon as the audio stops playing. So let's just listen first and read along 
and then we can have the audio later on and talk about it as well. The Haka Dance. The Maori people are the original inhabitants of New Zealand. They are Polynesian and their name means children of heaven. They speak English as well as Maori and are friendly and kind. Today, most Maori people follow a European lifestyle, but they still keep the customs and traditions of their culture alive. One of the most impressive Maori traditions is the haka dance. It is a war dance, but the Maori now perform it on special occasions, such as when welcoming visitors. They dance in the traditional Maori costume called kakahu. This includes a grass skirt and a belt. The belts have different designs on them that represent elements of nature, such as the waves of a river or the stars in the sky. The Maori people are famous for their tattoos or tamoko. Men wear them all over their faces and women on their chin and lips. The tattoos are not simple drawings. Each one is unique and they tell us who the person is or which tribe they belong to. So now we've read about the uh, Maori people and how they are the original inhabitants of New Zealand. I think we came across a little bit, um, a few words that were not familiar. For example, the haka dance is one of the words that is not familiar in the English culture. Um, the same is kakahu and the tamoko. These are words that are not familiar in the English language, but they are um, words from New Zealand, and obviously they have different meanings attached to them. So the haka dance is a dance that they perform. Um, it's a traditional dance. Let's look at another word, the kakahu, and this is the costume that they wear. Uh, most guys, most of you guys would notice that they also wear these skirts um, around them. This is just a culture where they feel comfortable in when they are at home. It is not um, uncommon for them to, to walk around in these skirts, but it's very common for them to, to walk around and it may seem as something different, something that you are not used to, but these guys, this is their culture, so they feel quite comfortable in it. Um, one of the last things that I want to bring your attention to is the tamoko, and these are the tattoos that you see on their face. Now, some of these guys, they don't have the tattoos on their face, but on their bodies, you will see a number of tattoos. Most of you guys know um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, famous actor. He is of... Um, the Maori descent, I believe. So you will notice that he also has a tattoo on his arm and on his um, chest. So most of you guys know Dwayne The Rock Johnson and he is quite familiar with the culture because that is where his descent is from. So let's go on a little bit further to the next slide. All right, use the phrases to make sentences about the Maori and we when we talk about the Maori, we talk about these people, the people in New Zealand, right? So first of all, we have a word and that is original inhabitants. Now before we can make sentences about these, we need to understand what these words mean. So I will briefly go through it. Um, original inhabitants, those are the people that occupied the lands. They were the first people to occupy the land. So if teacher occupies, let's say for example, land X, then teacher is one of the first inhabitants of land X. So you guys are in Vietnam, you guys occupied Vietnam, so you guys are the original inhabitants of Vietnam. Right, next word I want to bring your attention to is... The Maori still keep their costumes and traditions customs alive. Customs and traditions. Right, so customs and traditions, what are we talking about? This is simply the traditions they follow and the customs. Most of you guys are familiar 
was when you go to the pagoda and you pray. So these are the customs and traditions that New Zealanders follow. All right? Um, and remember, we are supposed to make sentences of these words. The next one is elements of nature. When we talk about elements of nature, we simply talk about the earth, wind, fire, and water. These are the elements of nature. So I'll say it again. Earth, wind, fire, and water. Right, next one, traditional costume. As you'll notice in the picture, the guy doing the haka dance, so these are the traditional costumes. But um, the traditional costumes does not only end here. You'll be familiar with something um, almost like a rag or a piece of um, clothing material that they put around their waist. And it looks like a skirt, but this is quite familiar with them. And they feel very comfortable because that is their tradition. All right, tattoos. Most of you guys are familiar with tattoos, the writings on the skin. Um, these tattoos has meaning or they have meaning for these uh, Maori people. You know that some of the Vietnamese um, boys and girls, they have tattoos on their arms or or on the legs, so you guys are quite familiar with the concept of tattoos. And then war dance, this is quite an intimidating type of a dance. You'll notice when you watch football, especially the boys that's into rugby, um, if you watch football, you'll notice that the New Zealand team always does the haka dance before they start the, um, before they start their match. This is just the dance they perform to intimidate the opponents, um, to give them quite a scare. And this is a dance which is a little bit intimidating if you look at it. But it's not that uncommon to them. It's just a way of scaring the opponent and creating fear on the inside. It's quite a familiar dance and they love it. And that's part of their traditions and customs. Right, so we are supposed to make um, sentences about the Maori. So let's look at the first one, the original inhabitants. The Maori are the in original inhabitants of New Zealand, just like you are the original inhabitants of Vietnam. Number two, we look at customs and traditions. So we look at if we make a <coughs> sentence, if you guys can make one and pause the video before I play. For example, the Maori still keep their customs and traditions alive. So we can also say that the Vietnamese keep their customs and traditions alive. Right, next, elements of nature. Let's read a little bit about that. Alright, the traditional Maori belts have designs on them to symbolize elements of nature. Now if you look here, you'll notice the belt. Right, these belts are supposed to symbolize elements of nature. We'll go into that a little bit in detail when we go on. Next one is the traditional costume. Okay, cacao is the name of the traditional Maori costume. And in Vietnam, you have your traditional costume, which is called the Aotiai. I hope I'm saying it right. All right, tattoos, let's go on. Tamoko is the Maori word for tattoos right and if we go on a little bit further the haka is a maori war dance right so the war dance that we were talking about in vietnam you have your vina house and you have your different dances which i'm not quite familiar with but in new zealand they do the war dance which is called the haka all right, moving on to our next slide. Obviously, you can use these words to make sentences of your own. Do not feel restricted only to use my sentences, but you can make your sentences as well. All right, so let's move on. Okay, let's explain the words or phrases in bold. Now, once again, I've explained original inhabitants. All right, they are the first people to occupy the land. That's what the original inhabitants mean. So the Vietnamese people were the first people to come to Vietnam and occupy the land. Okay, right. They are Polynesian. 
and their names means children of heaven. I don't think I need to explain what the word means mean. Okay, um, we are quite familiar with it. Customs and traditions, we've touched on it. You guys are familiar with certain customs and traditions. Um, when it's your Lunar New Year, you guys give lucky money. That's part of the custom and the tradition. And you guys, um, when you give the lucky money, you're supposed to say something positive for the year. So that's one of the customs. I don't know or I'm not sure if you guys are doing the dance with the dragon. Um, but in the event that you do, that will also for, form part of the customs and traditions. Right, and the next one is the word alive. If we look at the word customs and traditions, um, but they still keep the customs and traditions of the culture alive. What does that mean? They perform it regularly so that it does not grow old or go out of fashion. So just like you guys celebrate your Lunar New Year every year, you are keeping it alive so that your children and your children's children will know about it one day. Okay. Right, next one, occasion. When we talk about special occasions, we talk, normally talk about birthdays, we normally talk about things that, that does not happen every single day. So that's a special occasion. Right, and then the next one, uh, this includes a grass skirt and a belt. Um, I don't think I need to explain the word includes. What includes means it just adds. Okay, right, elements of nature such as waves of a river or the stars in the sky. Right, I touched upon the elements of nature, which is um, the fire, which is wind. Um, in this case, when we talk about water, we talk about the waves of the river. When we talk about water, um, the elements of nature can also refer to the stars in the sky. All right, these are the imprints, the prints they have on their belts. Okay, so when you look at the belt, they have these um, designs that you see on the belt. So these are the elements of nature. Right, each one is unique and tell us who the person is. So when we look at the word unique, we look at something that is special to the New Zealand culture. All right, so I've touched on each of these words in bold so we have an idea of what they are so we can move on to the next slide right find three Maori words in the text what do they refer to what are these words in your language now obviously um, these words I do not know what they are in your language you alone will know I only know the English words for it now when we need to find three words maori words it's simply words that are not english so if we look at the text find the words that are not english and we can see here's one word and that's the haka and that is a traditional type of a dance that is not an english word next word kakahu that is a costume you guys would know what the vietnamese name for costume is and then the last one if we look in our text Tamoko, and these are tattoos. And once again, you guys would know what tattoos are because I'm not quite familiar with the Vietnamese word for tattoos. All right, so Tamoko. All right, so find these words, and as you can see, these words are highlighted. Haka is the war dance, Kakao is the traditional Maori costume, and Tamoko are the tattoos. All right, and if we move on. Okay. Now I think I want you to pause if you have a partner or someone at home that's well fluent or needs to practice English as well because you guys are watching this at home. You can think and practice with them why should people keep their cultures or customs alive and give reasons. Now before I give you the answer, you can practice and ask yourself why should people keep their cultures or customs and traditions alive in Vietnam. Right, so this is something for you to think about. I'll reveal the answer. Okay, so let's go through it together. People should keep the customs and traditions alive because they remind them of where they come from and they remind them of the history of the ancestors. It is very important not to forget where you come from. 
all right so you can pause the video on this one to just have a little bit of a reflection and think and then we can go on to the next slide right complete the table with information from the text right so who are we talking about and that is the maori people where they live they live in new zealand right and their origin if you guys do not know um, it's usually in the beginning that's the first line of the text the origin is polynesian and the languages that they speak if you guys are not familiar with it they speak english or maori okay this is um the same as in vietnam where you have multiple languages that you speak and what are some of the traditions you can pause the video and find the answers but we can go on a war dance they perform on special occasions a costume that includes a grass skirt and a belt with designs on it related to the elements of nature tattoos right men have them all over their faces women have them on their chin and lips all right let's move on Okay, use it to talk about the Maori. Obviously, we cannot talk about it now, but you guys can practice if you have someone at home that you are fluently with. Um, but we can go on to the next slide. All right, and that's the end. I want you guys to think of the traditions in your country. What are some of the dances that you perform? Obviously, we cannot do this now. But you guys can perform this task at home where you think and just reflect on what are some of the traditions that you guys have in Vietnam and then compare it to the guys in New Zealand. All right, let's go on to our workbook. All right, going on to our workbook for today, Unit 7D, where we will be reading um i usually ask you guys what do you see in the picture and that's my first question so here we have a painting on a piece of rock so let's read the text together and then we can see and answer the questions that follow but right, read the text and choose the correct answer to the questions that follow all right the aboriginal dream time is an important part of aboriginal culture and it explains where the Aboriginal people came from and how they developed their culture. Aborigines have a long presence in Australia, so we're talking about Australia, dating back about 40,000 to 50,000 years without any change. Dreamtime myths, now a myth is something that has not been proven, so it's not true, so a myth is not true true okay dream time myths include stories about things that have happened in the past how people and the universe were created and why they were created in aboriginal culture the universe was created by the spirit with special powers some of them were kind-hearted while others were cruel the australian aborigines speak of the guru wari a power we find in the earth they say that Every activity, event or life process that occurs at a particular place leaves something special behind on earth as plants leave an image of themselves as seeds. Well, this is quite an interesting text. We know we're talking about the Aborigines and these are people that exist and they are still um, in existence up until today. And what country are they from? They are from Australia, the same as the Maori people are from New Zealand, the Aborigines, they are from Australia. Right, so what does Aboriginal dream time explain? Do you guys know? Look at example A, B or C, the Aboriginal dream time. If you guys do not know, the answer is B, where Aborigines came from. All right, so the whole text is about the Aboriginal culture and where they came from. All right, what's special about the Aborigines? They live longer than other people. A, B, they have had the same culture for 40 to 50,000 years. They started living in Australia 40 to 50,000 years ago. C, so what's the correct answer? 
it's B. Alright, going on to our vocabulary, we need to match the words to form phrases. On the left hand side, number 1 through 8, we have 8 words, and on the right hand side, on the letters, we have a to H, letter A to H, and we need to match these to form phrases, okay? Right, so if we go on, oh, before we go on to the vocabulary, let's go on first to number three, which part is not part of the dream time, A, B, or C. And as you guys all notice, that which is not part, it is C, how Australia got its name. Alright, number four, the people who created the universe according to, to Aboriginal culture. Was it A, B or C? Once again, pause so that you can have a time to reflect. And the answer is B. Alright, and number five, the origin, Aboriginal word Gurruwari means what a b or c we have three options and the answer means option c and that is power all right now we can go on to our vocabulary okay match the words and phrases from left to right number one we have follow so if we look at the first word if we look at the first word to follow the answer is h follow the lifestyle right number two we have elements elements goes with which one elements goes with of nature so that is C number three to keep keep what and we say keep alive so that is G number four to perform perform what and we say perform dances right number five we have traditional and traditional goes with which letter All right traditional goes with costumes number six we have belongs to and where does it fit into letter a to h belongs to a tribe okay number seven original if we look at our words on the right we see original goes with a inhabitants and number eight we have special and where does special fit into a to h special fits into occasions so that is if right if we go on use the phrases to complete the blanks all right so if we use these phrases phrases on the left hand side we have letters one to eight like the Maori people of New Zealand, the Aborigines are the number one. We can say that they are the original inhabitants of Australia. Many Aborigines live in the city today. And number two, follow the lifestyles of all other Australians. Number three, but there are still some who live in the outback and coexist with the elements of nature as they have done for thousands of years and then each aborigine belongs to a tribe and on special occasions they all gather together and wear traditional costumes and perform dances in this way they try to keep alive their traditions and culture from generation to generation all right I wanted you guys to complete this before we go to the video and then you can check your answers later on but I will put on the slide so that you can double check your answers and see if you are on the correct path all right so this is the answer for unit 7d you guys can just pause and see if you filled in the correct answer and then that will be it. So that's all from me. I hope you guys enjoy 7D. See you on the next run on Unit 7E. Goodbye.